Hello, and welcome back to Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Thought I'd try something a little different, get like a, a Witcher thing going. Ponytail on top, loose on the bottom, over the shoulders. I don't know, kind of digging it. Got to grow it a little longer though, right? Plus my hair is like really curly. Uh, I would not make a very good Witcher cosplayer. I am getting the gray in the hair though. I don't know how seeable that is. <laughs> Oh man, alright, let's start this video off proper now. We're going to continue on with uh, post-rock week. We're going to check out Explosions in the Sky, which I have heard everything from you have to listen to them. They are pinnacle post-rock to they are the most overrated post-rock band. Why does anybody ever request them? So that's quite a range of comments I've heard about them. Uh, we got stuff coming in from Purgatory, Eric Rayfinger, Rayfinger, Rayfinger. Finger, right finger. I think that's it right there, right finger. Uh, Isaiah Valdez, Jeanette Simpson, and Thoughts of Decay. And uh, yeah, this uh, birth and death of the day was 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 pretty much the one that uh, that everybody said I should check out. So that's what we're doing. Uh, this is a little on the shorter side. Uh, we're working at just over seven minutes i think i didn't know anything post could be less than 10 so uh yeah let's get into this one let's see what's up I like this highly compressed low volume open. That delay has given this a really weird time feel. A little tambourine is given a nice little bit of character.
I really can't be mad at this song. It's just so hopeful and optimistic. That snare the roll though, right? It's actually kind of genius using that snare roll to give like that vibrating texture to the guitar part that's tremolo picking. hammering away on that snare. All right, I, I assume that goes into another track. Um, uh, it, again, though, uh, I don't remember what band this was last time, but there's so much going. I love the ending buildup, and then they just drag out the ending too long. Uh, it's another song where I feel like the end was easily... 30 to 40 seconds prior to the actual end of the track. However, I'm going to give this one a little bit of leeway since it sounds like it goes into the next track. So I'm going to assume that the track did end about you know, a little under a minute earlier and that the rest was build up 
uh, sort of a bridge between the tracks. Um, however, though, this song drew me in. I don't know how you could walk away from this without being emotionally affected. Uh, although I, you know, that's that's biased. I, I'm sure there are a couple of songs that haven't hit me recently and people are just like wow how do you listen to this and not feel you know greatness or sorrow or whatever um but yeah something about this track just grabs me pulls me in 100 percent um it does a really good job of doing what i enjoy in post-rock is having that droning but not sticking around too long just like yesterday's group uh they know when they should be moving on uh, you know, we have sections, we have repetition, we have droning, um, but it's not for large periods at a time. There's always something else to listen to. And just like I was talking about yesterday, I had the time to check out this instrument and that instrument and how these two instruments, uh, you know, play off of each other and whatnot. And I have time to check out everything that's going on. And by the time I've heard how everything's going on in a section, the songs moved on. And it's it's sort of like post-rock built for me. I'm not saying that this is the best way to write post-rock music or post-metal for that music or anything that is repetitive or droney or slow burn or whatever. Um, it just seems to line up better for me because about the time that I've had my fill of a section, we've moved on. And it just means that their rhythmic timings are synchronized to my rhythmic timings. Obviously not purposefully done, but just it's a coincidence that uh, when they feel like they need to move on to the next section in their composition, I'm ready for them to move on. And that's why uh, this band just works so much better for me. Um, or I guess to say this song. I don't know if the, the band's works are all like this. Um, I also th really enjoy the fact that it's condensed. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I think this is the only sub 10 minute song we've checked out. And well, I'm pretty sure it is in post rock and maybe it is if, if we cover post metal as well. Uh, I think Russian circles was only like eight, but for the most part, we're looking at some long tracks and I think a lot of that comes from the repetition and the droning and sitting in a sound for, you know, a long time. And I think that's just, that's something that works better for me with this because they're not staying on, on sections longer than I think they need to. And obviously that they think they need to, the song tends to be a little shorter. Um, but yeah, I, I like the slower runtime. Now, however, we could also have a Russian circle where we only have two sections out of this and we end up with just a song that doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, and and the, the lower, the, the shorter runtime doesn't really mean anything when the song is just one long section. But yeah, I, I, I just, I love everything that's going on here as far as the composition and when things are transitioned to and from. Uh, I also want to point out the optimism here. A lot of post-rock and metal has been sitting in negative feelingscapes. That's not a word, but I'm making it up. Like soundscapes for feelings. Or landscapes for feelings. Uh, yeah, so I feel like a lot of this we, we've gone through is negative or has negative connotations to it. I think one of the songs we listened to last week had optimism to it, but it was tinged. You know, it was it was optimism through or maybe like like sorrow through the eyes of optimism. Optimism tinged with with sorrow or or despair or something a little negative. Uh I I'm not, I don't remember who did that. I don't remember what song that was. It might not even have been last week. It could have been a, a special selection, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like a lot of what we've covered so far has been more in the negative sphere. We've had some beautiful songs, but they've been hauntingly beautiful or depressingly beautiful. Uh, you know, they all have this tinge of, of 
horror or sadness. There's always been something negative. And this song is just hopeful from beginning to end. It is so positive. It's so optimistic. It's uplifting. There isn't a single section where we hit just a really, you know, unstable chord in the progression. Anything that feels ominous or or sad or anything. It's just real uplifting, clean chord progressions throughout. And uh, I like that. I know that's not for everybody. Um, it, a lot of rock and metal is based around, you know, well, it, you know, it all harkens back to rock and roll and the blues and blues scale is, it's a downer scale. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it, uh, you know, you can, you can make some happier music with the blues scale, but it's always going to have that underlying negativity to it. Um, and I think rock and metal just pull from that. It's very difficult to write happy rock or happy metal without it feeling poppy. And a lot of that is just because how we associate chord progressions. But yeah, these guys just, I, I just love the, the opt. It is rock 100%. We have the distortion. We have the heavy guitars. We have the, the heavy drum playing. But it's just so uplifting. Just every bit of this. I don't even remember what the song is called. Uh, uh, all I was thinking about was explosions in the sky and kind of like um, fireworks going off and just, I don't know. It, it seemed like the soundtrack to an indie rom-com. Right? Could, could you hear that? I heard that. I heard that all the way through. And it was just, it's, it's a delight. It seriously is a delight. The birth and death of the day. I didn't get any connotations of death in here at all. Now, granted, the death of the day is the birth of the night. So it's kind of, uh, you know, glass half full kind of thing where you can look at it negatively, but it's also a positive thing. Um, I don't know, but the song to me was just pure glee, pure delight, packaged into a slightly repetitive form of restraint and texture layering speaking of texture layering i want to point out one specific incident that just grabbed me and that was the snare just rolling in time with the tremolo picking of the electric guitar and the rattling from the snare beads just giving it just giving the guitar tremolo picking this rattly texture to it uh, the drumming, I think, was a little lower in the mix, specifically for this. It wasn't so much to hear the, the snare roll. It was to kind of give that extra texture and have it blend into the guitar playing. And I think it worked beautifully. It was a really interesting combination of textures. Uh, and it just, it worked for that section. I don't, there are very few times that I will take, uh, you know, an extended drum roll uh, and, and not feel like it's unnecessary. <laughs> um, I don't know. You, you do a drum roll for a bar and you're good. You put it in a, a fill or a part of a solo and you're good. You put accents in it and that's where it really kills. But if you just do a straight drum roll and I think he was accenting the first beat of every bar, uh, yeah, that is boring. But he just utilized it so well. It wasn't to focus on the snare roll. It was for it was to you know buttress another instrument, and I love that. That's just genius. Uh, it just goes to show a lot of the the nuances that I think this band is really good at, uh, and a lot of their nuance comes from their restraint. They had a uh, tambourine close to the beginning of the song, really low in the mix. If you listened for it, you could hear it. If you weren't listening for it, I think it's very easy to miss it. But they put it in there. And it wasn't like super noticeable. It wasn't a super big part. It was like eight eighth notes and then, you know, rest for... Yeah, I guess, yeah, eight eighth notes and then rest for a bar. And then play those eight eighth notes again. And they only did it like three times, four times. And then the tambourine was gone, never came back. Uh, right there at the end, as we were getting into the solo guitar, solo clean guitar part to transition into the next track there was a single like ride symbol hit just 
<laughs> it's those little bits of restraint. Uh, there was a part in the middle-ish of this song. We we went down to a, a softer part. And everybody's playing a little bit faster notes. They're not super fast. We are calming down a little bit. Um, but then there's a, a guitar that just plays these quiet whole notes. Just like, da, da. And... It plays like four or six of those notes and then it just stops. It's those little bits of restraint where they know that something needs to go there. But they don't want it to be there, if that makes sense. If it's missing, nobody would really notice. When it's there, people still, I don't think a lot of people would notice because they're they're low in the mix. They pop up for a couple notes and then, and then they're gone. Um, it's, it's these little flourishes that are not riff based. I mean, they are riff based, but they're not repeated much. It's, it's usually one repetition or so. Um, yeah. And I just, I really love their ability to say, we're going to utilize this instrument for 10 seconds. Most people probably won't even hear it, uh, on their first listen and we're done. That, that instrument can go in the closet. We don't need it anymore or whatever. Um, yeah, just wild. I love it. Like that is that is just the kind of restraint you don't see too often uh, in any writing. Usually when you bring an instrument in, you want to justify it. Even in, I mean, pop and techno might be a little bit different because it's all samples. And, a lot, and I think a lot of the mindset is that you need the right sample for the right section. But when you have uh, live instruments, I think there's a, a feeling that if you include something, you need to include it. You're not going to bring in, uh, a, you know, a saxophone to your metal band and let them play for a bar, right? You might, they, he might not, you might not write him in for the whole song. He might have, you know, little sections, but he's going to have sections. All right. Like, like rivers of Nile, uh, owls where owls know my name. The saxophonist didn't play throughout the entire song, but he had his section. He's like two or three solo sections. Uh, we were, we were just pro, you know predominant in the mix, and you know he did his thing. He didn't show up, play you know a lick, and then walk off and never come back. It's it's just not. I don't think it's a typical mindset for composers. Like I said, I, I think there's a nagging feeling for a lot of people who write music that if you include an instrument, you need to include it. Uh, so yeah, to hear them bring an instrument in for, you know, two bars and then not come back at all and not even be prominent in the mix. Like you might not even realize that the instrument's there. That's gutsy. I like it. All right. So that's my thoughts on explosions in the sky. This is where you guys come in though. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought. Uh, like I said, I have seen r r comments before ranging from these are the best to they're overrated. And I'm kind of curious where people fit these guys in uh maybe like what the ratio is of people who think they're overrated versus just pinnacle post rock i love it but i don't know if it's typical po i don't know if there's a typical post i like post metal which i could kind of see a line between all the bands uh post rock is wildly very varied and it could just be my selection selecting five songs out of an entire genre is no way for a cohesive understanding of a genre but post metal for whatever reason whether it's because that is what the genre is or because we just got five similar tracks other than the ocean the ocean was a little different we got we got tracks that were very similar and this week i mean i, I don't think these songs they have core identities there's definitely a core string running between them where i can point to all these and say yes i understand their post rock but the songs are just so different. They really are. Um, so yeah. Anyways though. I don't even know how I got on that tangent. While you're down there in the comments. If you like there's some buttons above that. Uh, a like. A little thumbs up guy. And then a subscribe button guy. And then a bell guy. If you click on those. It helps out my channel immensely. It also helps out you. If you'd like to get some notifications about the channel. If you enjoy what I'm doing here. And want to know when I post new stuff. Uh, and below that is a description box. With some links in it if you're interested blocked video links uh if you're in denmark we've actually had two blocked video well no one blocked video this week 
uh, for that region, for that country. So if you're watching from Denmark and don't use a VPN, wow, if, if I had a VPN sponsor, this would be a great place to put it. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're watching from Denmark and don't have a VPN, you can check out the link in the description for blocked videos and uh, you'll be able to watch it. I believe it was... Huh, I don't remember now. I think it might have been Pelican. I think it was the Pelican video. And then, of course, the uh, bo board drum playthrough of Leprous's The Sky is Red was blocked worldwide. And that was Saturday's special selection. So, yeah, we have two new blocked videos added to the list this week so far. All right. I will be back tomorrow to finish out with God is an Astronaut. Uh, that just seems to be a wildly popular post-rock band. And then the weekend brings with us some uh, special selection stuff. And next week, Monday, I feel like I regret it already, we're looking at Vocalist to Growl. I'm trying to get into it, maybe understand it. I don't. I don't know if liking it, enjoying it is my goal, but I'm trying to at least submerse myself. So we're doing Amazing Growlers next week, which is also kind of doubling as Accessible Growlers. Like I said, my goal is to kind of get into that vocal delivery texture. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be checking out bands with growls in them. And like I said, I'm kind of regretting it already because it is not my favorite vocal delivery style. I've tolerated it. Uh, in a couple of groups. At the beginning of this channel, I was not a fan at all, but it doesn't seem to grate on me as much when we've checked it out recently. We're going to do a whole week of it, though. <laughs> I really hope that I'm acclimating towards it, which is why it hasn't been so bad lately, and not that we've just had some really good ones, or ones that just lined up with me for whatever reason. Because this could end up to be a, a week of, of uh, vocal delivery I'm not fond of <laughs> oh man that's my fault though i should never have put it in the poll because i knew it was gonna win. i knew it was gonna win all right so yeah that's that's the plan for the rest of the week until then like i said i'll be back tomorrow 5 p.m eastern standard time 9 p.m utc as the same with every day doesn't matter what day it is i have videos coming out at that time all right you guys stay safe out there have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos Thank you.